This is Tammy Oldham Ashcraft. Tammy has a book out called Red Sky in the Morning. She and her fiancé, Richard Sharp, were uh, on a sailing trip a few years ago. Uh, w- were these waters shark infested? Well, there's, yeah, there's sharks out there in the, in the Pacific. Sure, I saw a number of sharks. And, uh, in fact, I had to uh, dive underneath the boat because my steering was started to go out. And um, there were sharks under the boat and, uh, and lots of fish. And um, So you saw people at some point? You saw boats? Right. I saw two ships and one airplane. And I had, uh, at, by the time I had seen the second ship, I'd found a number of flares. And, but nobody saw me. I couldn't get them to, uh, to see me at all, even with, with shooting flares in the sky. Uh, did, you, did you find that you had uh, st- stuff within you that you just never thought you had? And I don't mean physical. I mean yeah, you know, well, that emotional, spiritual. Instinct. Yeah. Yeah, the survival instinct is incredibly strong, and um, it was uh, it definitely came out. And uh, I just, um, I also, my spirit came toward to me as well. I mean, this voice that kept coming forward and getting me, getting me back on track mentally and uh, keeping me going uh, was really incredible too. I go into that a lot in my book, um, and um, it it really. At one point, I almost um, committed suicide. I was almost ready to take myself out because I just couldn't handle it anymore. I was going to ask you, what day was your lowest low? Well, I think that was probably it. In fact, I, it, that day... I, I mean, number-wise, like how far oh, into this? Um, oh, it was, it was pretty far into it. It was about day uh, 38, I think. I mean, there was a lot of ups and downs. But Why was that day worse than the others? Well, because I had seen the two ships and one airplane, and nobody saw me. And I started mentally spiraling, going nuts, thinking that I was, uh, I was not really alive, that I w- this was just a, uh, I was a spirit on this boat just drifting around, you know. It was uh, it, that, uh, why nobody could see me, I couldn't understand at that point. Did you have any uh, navigational equipment that was working at that point? I mean, how did you know you weren't just sailing around in a circle? Well, um, I had my, what's called a sextant. All my electronics were completely ruined. All my uh, uh, navigational electronics uh, were, was ruined, and my radios and everything. So I had what's called a sextant, an instrument that you can um, navigate by the sun and the stars with, and that's how I did it. So you had this little rigged up sail, and you made it all the way to Hawaii? Right. And right where, did, the, where did you land? Right to the entrance of Hilo Harbor on the main island of Hawaii. And, you, and what did it feel like when you started, when it first came over the horizon, and you saw that you were actually going to make it somewhere? I mean, that, that, what's going through your head at that point? Oh, when I saw the island. Well, the first thing I did when I saw the island was I'd saved one beer. I ran down, got my beer, and had a cigar. A cigar. Saved one beer. <laughs> when, when you're out, you know, we hear about people who are, like, out in the desert, and they see mirages, and they start seeing things. Did that happen to you at all? Did you start hallucinating and seeing well, things yeah, that weren't there? Well, yeah, because a lot of times, you know, when you see these islands on the distance, it, it, they look like clouds. And you really can't tell that they're an island until hours later when the clouds aren't dissipating. And that's what happened uh, when I first saw the island was I didn't, I thought it was clouds. And then um, by noon, the clouds hadn't gone away, so I knew that was Hawaii. And I was, of course, you know, in, I was just over elated with seeing it and, and uh, knowing that I was so close. And you didn't run out of food? Uh, no, I was close. I was close to running out, but I was able to ration enough. How long did it take you to uh, come to the decision to write this book to be able to face what had happened? Well, it took me years. Um, it took me it took me five years to write the book, and the screenplay is also written. And then, um, and it took me what uh, ten ten years really to. Um, I've never had a time in my life to be able to put it down, quite frankly. And, and it just finally, I was had the opportunity to take some time to do it. It's a huge undertaking to write a book, and I just, uh, I, I thought I would be done in a year, but it took me uh, nearly five years. Did you have to wait until this whole thing was over? I mean, um, uh, what I was going to ask you is, you at some point had to mourn the loss of your fiancé. Oh. And I'm guessing that uh, sure. you may not have been able to do that on the boat because you were so, you know, your, your instinct was survival. Uh, or did you do that while you were out there? Well, I did. Yes, I grieved um, while I was out there. But you're right. The survival uh, portion of the, just really uh, kind of muted my grieving. And really, when I started to really 
um, get into my grieving it was when I got to shore and had to be around people again and see couples together and this kind of thing. It really uh, elevated it. And then um, it took me years. I mean, I had nightmares and dreams about him for a long time, and um, it took me... It, well, it just took me years mm-hmm. to get over it and even get into another relationship again. How long did it take you before you went back out to sea or out sailing? Oh, six months. I, yeah. I went, I went to, uh, back to England. He was from England, and I went back and saw his family and told them what happened. And then I've got some things together here in the, in the States, and then our boat was down in Tahiti. So I ended up going back down there to his boat and uh, getting my things and, um, and continuing on. How was your health? Well, by then my health was fine. No, yeah. I mean I'm saying uh, when you when you uh, got to Hawaii. Well, uh, when I got to Hawaii, I actually looked pretty good. I had lost about sixty pounds. I was already very thin, but um, yeah. I lost like fifty, sixty pounds when I'd gotten in, and um, I was healed. I had my my I had a major cut down to my bone in my leg, and that was the only thing that hadn't quite healed yet. But I butterflied my head back together, and I had all kinds of cuts from flying debris and glass. And those, after 41 days, those were all pretty much healed up. Sounds like an amazing read, one of the types of books that you just can't put down. It is, yeah, it has gotten incredible reviews, and um, I've written it in a flashback style so that it's, it's easy reading and it's not dry reading. It's yeah. very, uh, it's an adventure story. I mean, well, the thanks fact for that, telling yeah, us about the it. The fact that you didn't, uh, you know, do yourself in was a, a, I mean, I don't even, how would you even do that out there? Well, I had a rifle on board. Oh. Yeah. Tammy Ashcraft, the book is Red Sky Sky and Morning. It's in bookstores now. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you. For a limited time, Sweet Deals is offering qualified listeners the vacation of a lifetime. An all-inclusive five-day, four-night stay in a suite for just two adults and up to two children in Cancun, Mexico for just $299. This opportunity is valued at more than $2,600. That's right, a $2,600 vacation for $299 and it's all-inclusive, meaning all your food and drinks are included. Attendance is required at a presentation for vacation club ownership, but who cares? There's no purchase necessary. And you have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you change your mind. Do not miss this exclusive luxury vacation offer from SweetDeals.com. $299 for four nights at an all-inclusive resort in beautiful Cancun, Mexico. Go to SweetDeals.com right now and snag this once-in-a-lifetime offer. That's SweetDeals.com.